Everybody, JC here with another TNI toy review, and today's review is in association with JediInsider.com, your number one news source for everything Star Wars. And for today's review, we're going to be taking a look at the new Star Wars The Black Series 4-inch Poe Dameron figure from The Force Awakens. Now, this figure is a Walmart exclusive. It has started to hit shelves now. It comes packaged in the same kind of packaging we see with all the Black Series figures. You've got the black box with the red background, figure clearly displayed. You've got the image of the character down below along with the name. On the side, you have the red border with these four-inch figures. We, they're not really numbered. You just have assortment numbers. And then on the back, we have a brief bio in multiple languages. Okay, and while we're looking at a Poe Dameron figure, I figured we'd also take this opportunity to look at the Hasbro 3 and a quarter inch scale X-Wing fighter toy as well. I've had this one for a while and I've just been kind of sitting on it, so I figured I'd kill two birds with one stone. So I'm not going to focus a whole lot on this in this review since it's been out for quite a while, several months at least, but I will uh, we'll take a brief look at it and I'll share some thoughts on it. So it does come packaged in the same style of packaging we see with all the Force Awakens stuff in the basic line. You've got the Kylo Ren image up in the corner with the Star Wars Force Awakens logo. You've got some pretty cool artwork for the toy. Looks like some TIE fighters pursuing it. And then you see the figure that it comes with, which is another Poe Dameron figure. This one only has five points of articulation um, down in the corner. And then on the back of this one, we have a little brief bio for the X-Wing up at the top. And then it shows the toy and the various features that, that it has. Okay, so let's get these open and take a look at what's inside. Okay, so first we'll take a look at the X-Wing real quick. There is some minor assembly with this. So first of all, you've got this front piece of the ship and it's just made with rubber and you slide it over the front of the actual toy and it just fits on there. And then there's a missile that you can put in the bottom. They give you a, a missile launcher that you can fire. So you just slide that in there. And then there's a button here that you push and it fires it. And then finally, you've got to attach the um, wing cannons and these come out of the packaging somewhat warped at least mine did they're kind of a soft plastic so you may want to take a, a blow dryer or something to straighten them out and they have um, basically there's pegs on the top and the bottoms of the wings and they have various sizes so you kind of have to match them up to make sure you get the right one for the right wing but once you do then they just uh, actually that's not the right one so once you do match up the hole with the pegs, then they just attach right on there. But again, you can see this one's pretty bent, so um, definitely I'd probably recommend you try and straighten those out before you attach them to the ship. Here's a look at the X-Wing fully assembled. Uh, not a whole lot to, to it, but if you need some help, they do provide an instruction sheet. The figure we'll look at closely when we start looking at the Black Series version. I'll give you a comparison. But for the X-Wing, you know, you've got basically just a dark gray plastic with this uh, orangey type coloring on it. A little bit of a couple panels are lighter gray. Um, but pretty basic, simple paint applications. Really no detail inside the cockpit. It's a one-seater. Uh, maybe a little bit of sculpting detail with controls, but mostly you just got the decals. And that's it. Uh, the canopy is just almost a soft type plastic and uh, the windows are clear, they're not tinted or anything. You've got this BB-8 in the back which has some detailing on the head which you can turn. You can turn the head left, you know, basically rotate the head around, um, even push it forward a little bit. But the body of BB-8, and the BB-8 is not removable, um, is just all white. There's no paint detail on the body of BB-8. Now this works just like the old Kenner. Uh, X-Wing toy where you push the robot and it pops the wings up and then if you want to close the wings there's just this little knob on the back and you just push it and it closes the wings. On the bottom of the X-Wing as I showed you before you've got that firing missile and you just push this button and the missile fires and it fires pretty good and then you have the working landing gear again like on the classic uh, Kenner one where it, you, know, you can push it in and pull it out. Okay, and the figure itself, this is the figure that comes with the, the X-Wing, the five points of reticulated version, and it fits in there. It's a little tight fit. You've got to squeeze the arms to get it in there, and you got to make sure you push it down, but once you do, um, you can get the canopy closed. Okay, and the X-Wing measures about 15, actually if you count to the tip of the engines on the wings, it measures out to just over 17 inches in length. 
and then for width counting from the tips of the wings it's about 13 and a half inches in width. Okay so now we're going to take a look at the Black Series 4 inch Poe Dameron figure and this figure is pretty nice looking it comes with a helmet that is removable and there's some nice detailing on this you've got the red alliance symbol and you've got this white striping the rest of the helmet is a dark gray almost black color you've got the blast shield up here top and again you have the alliance symbol with some uh, red and, and grayish white striping on the top and then you've got the little uh, goggles which are done with a, a transparent gold tinted plastic so is actually um, this is the helmet that comes with the the X-wing fighter Poe Dameron figure, and the detail on this uh, Black Series one is a little bit nicer. You've got the extra paint applications with the white stripe and everything, and just a little more detail, uh, I think, with with just the paint applications in general. A little sharper red on on the Black Series version, uh, just a little bit crisper colors, and the same goes for the figures themselves. Um, I think you've got a little bit nicer detail on the paint applications on this Black Series one, like on his uh, little control panel here on his chest. You've just got more uh, paint colors. You've got a whiter cream and then some blue and white and darker grays, whereas this one's just mostly a lighter gray and a darker gray, and there's a little blotch of, of blue on there. Uh, the vest pieces are pretty similar, though. You've got the black dot down here. And you've got the alliance symbol on both both figures. Uh, the web gear, uh, you got like the belt buckles added on this one as opposed to the five points of articulated version. Both have working holsters. The guns, um, both come with guns, but and these are pretty much the same. Uh, not a whole lot of detail on these. They're basically just a, a cream color or a gray color. Um, but no wash work. I, there's a little more sculpting detail on the Black Series 1, but very little difference between these two weapons. Okay, and then other differences between these two figures. Um, the the red on the on the Black Series version of the jumpsuit is more orange than on the on the one that comes with the X-Wing fighter. I think this one's a little more movie accurate. You've also got some added sculpting detail and paint applications down here on this thing that goes around his leg. I, I'm never sure what these things are, but you know these used to be on the classic X-Wing fighter pilots as well. But you have the little silver um, pieces and gray, whereas on this one it's just painted all gray, so there's very little detail there. So overall, definitely, even though there's a, you know these figures do look very similar, um, I think there's more nicer detail and paint applications on this Black Series version as, appo as opposed to this version that comes with the X-Wing fighter. As far as the face sculpts go, I would say neither one looks that much like the actor, but the Black Series one I think is more detailed, has better paint applications, the skin tone is better, you've got um, like the eyebrows aren't as thick, so I think it looks better and then the hair is pretty much sculpted almost the same between the two but mostly the difference between these is just better paint applications on the black series one you also have some uh, five o'clock shadow on the black series version and the one that comes in the x-wing is just that kind of pale skin tone so the figure stands almost four inches exactly and he's pretty much the same height as the uh, Poe Dameron that comes with the x-wing fighter and here he is compared with that Luke Skywalker figure again, and you can see Poe Dameron is taller than Luke here. Okay, and then here's a comparison with the other Black Series figures, three and a quarter inch Force Awakens figures, um, Finn, the Stormtrooper, and Kylo Ren, and then also uh, a Force Awakens BB-8, just to give you a size comparison. You can get this Black Series Poe Dameron in the X-Wing fighter toy. It fits actually a little bit better as far as the arms go because you don't have to squeeze them quite as much to get them to fit in there. It is still a little bit of a tight fit and I can't get them to push down quite as much as I can the five points of articulated one. So you can get the canopy closed but it does kind of brush up against the helmet inside. Um, but you still can pretty much get it closed. Then for articulation, the, the, the one that comes with the X-Wing fighter just has the five points of articulation. No elbow joints, no knee joints or anything. But with the Black Series one, we definitely have more articulation. So I'll take his helmet off. Heads on a ball joint so he can look left and right. Not a whole lot of up and down movement with the head on this.
this one. Arms are attached with your standard ball hinge joint so you can get his arm all the way out. He's got good rotation. He's got a swivel at the elbow, single hinged elbow, so he can bend his elbow about that much. And then has the swivels at the wrists and has hinges on the hands so you can get some um, down movement. You don't really get any up movement with this one. Midsection joint, so you've got rotation there at the midsection there. You've got this hose that's attached from the leg uh, to this oxygen piece on his chest. So that does limit how much you can actually rotate the figure. You want to be careful and not pull this out. It doesn't appear to be removable. And then the legs are attached with those kind of hinge joints. But again, you've got the, this web gear on it, so it does limit how much you can actually move the legs. So you can only do the splits about that much. And then he can get his leg forward without any problem. And he can do his leg back about that much. He's also, you've got rotation there up where the, the leg meets the waist piece as well. You've got a single hinged knee, so he can bend his knee about that much. And you've also got the rotation there at the knee. And then with the feet, you've got hinges, so you've got some up and down movement. Um, and you've got some rotation there at the ankle. No pivot though and two peg holes on the bottom of his feet. Okay, so that's my view. I like the figure. I think the detail on it's nice. The paint applications are good and articulation is pretty good as well. As for the X-Wing Fighter toy, I'm not super impressed with that. I think it's way overpriced. It cost about $50. I don't really understand why it costs so much more than Hasbro's TIE Fighter toy, which I think costs $35. Between the two, I think the TIE Fighter is the nicer toy. Details on these are not great, especially like with the BB-8 where they didn't even paint the body of the of the figure. Um, and the features are pretty much the same as the old classic Kenner toy, which was a great toy for its time, but that toy was released back in the late 70s. So, you know, I think you could maybe come up with something a little better. I mean, we've had nicer X-Wings from Hasbro in the past, but this one I have to say is kind of media core at best. And like I said, not terribly cheap at $50. If you can find it on discount, then it might be worth picking up. Uh, the Poe Dameron figure is a Walmart exclusive figure. It is hitting shelves now, so you might be able to find it. Um, it's just started hitting shelves, so um, it may not be as readily available. The X-Wing is available everywhere, and it's been out for months, so you shouldn't have any problem finding that. We'll have a full gallery of images up for both of these at JediInsider.com. And as always, leave a comment, let us know what you think. If you're so inclined, please like the video. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. And until next time, I'll catch you later.